make sure you take the right door on your way down. There's no telling where you might end up. Can you make it through? To the night's end. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Back for another story, eh? Well, I welcome you back with a severed arm. I I mean, open arms. Ophelia's story really had an effect on me. It's lit a hunger in me that I've never felt before. Don't stay too long, dear listeners. Today's episode really shows us that we need to be careful entering haunted houses. You never know who you are going to meet. This episode contains themes and topics that may disturb some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Halloween Night Written by C.D. Kester Performed by Alvin Bowling II Limited Stories Tetsuya James Barnett and Victoria Irwin The portrait of Bob Marley was becoming hazy behind the smoke that was filling the room. I was beginning to zone out when I felt Mario tap me on the shoulder. He held out the bong and the lighter and was blowing huge smoke rings while filling them with smaller ones. I was grabbing them from him when Tim suggested a plan for the night. Dudes, what do y'all think about going to the haunted circus tonight? I've been hearing some crazy shit about that place. It's Halloween. I don't want to spend it cooped up in this place. Mario responded as I took my turn in the rotation. Yeah, man. It sounds like a good time. Unless Steve here is going to wuss out on us. Mario slapped me lightly on the back as he mentioned my name. I blew out a cloud and passed it on to Tim. (sighs) Ah, that sounds like a blast, man. I've been hearing good things about that place as well. Tim took his turn on the bong and then set it down with the lighter on his coffee table. He pulled out the keys to his dad's Lexus and dangled them like a trophy. Well, let's get going then. Mario looked a bit paler than he did before the keys came out. Tim noticed and mocked him for it. Huh, <laughs> what's wrong, bro? You didn't think I had a way to get there or what? <laughs> we laughed for a moment before Mario joined in himself. <laughs> Nah, it's gonna be fun. I've never been to one before, that's all. I reassured him as we began to get up and head for the door. There's nothing to worry about, man. I've been to a few. You just gotta remember that it's all a show. Most of the time, they aren't even allowed to touch you. Not sure if this one is like that or not. Tim laid it on thick as we made it out the front door. They're not allowed to touch you. Unless they're ripping your guts out or bashing your brains in. Otherwise, touching is totally off limits. Mario punched him in the arm as he hopped in the passenger seat. I slid into the back and Tim took to the driver's seat and started her up. His dad loved that car, so either this haunted circus must be a special occasion, or Tim was using it without his knowledge. I think I knew which it was. We made it to the haunt and pulled into the crowded parking lot. The lines were like nothing I'd ever seen. There were lines at the ATM, lines at the ticket booth, lines to get in, lines leading to the lines. I didn't even know if we would be able to make it through before they closed. Tim took out a fat stack of cash and flashed it at us when we made our way to the front of the line at the ticket booth. He smirked as he asked the lady at the front for three tickets as well as three fast passes to go with them. Mario and I slapped a high five as we heard this. The last thing we wanted was to waste our buzz on a line that took hours to get through. As we began to make our way over to the line, we were interrupted by the cackling of a man dressed as a clown with a giant set of razor sharp teeth. We all jumped a bit and quickly made fun of each other for doing so. The clown waved to us menacingly as we strolled past. We made our way up to the fast pass lane, and the guy taking the tickets was really hamming it up near the entrance. Step right up, come one, come all. 
All those who enter here can abandon hope and learn to cope. The haunted circus is not liable for any mental anguish or physical reactions resulting from the horrors that are contained within these cursed walls. What awaits you boys is a dark carnival. One that's so dark and demented, Bradbury himself would become faint of heart at the sight of it. Now you boys don't really think you're ready for something this diabolical, do you? Why don't you take yourselves back to the house and watch a little bit of Sesame Street with your mommies? <laughs> we laughed at his <laughs> insult and assured him we were ready for what awaited us. He put his hands on his hips and shook his head sullenly. Well, if you kids insist, then I guess I got no choice. You can't come out on that other side and try and say I didn't warn you. He paused and looked behind us in shock before continuing. Well, it looks like we're ready to get things started. He stepped out of the way, and we slowly looked up and behind us in the direction that he was looking. Three of the most sinister-looking clowns were towering over us and holding giant hammers. We went barreling through the door as the clowns followed us slowly and deliberately. The first stop was the maze of Funhouse Mirrors. When we turned the first corner, we were met with our reflections. Only they were stretched in all kinds of strange ways. We stopped to marvel at this for a moment. Tim was getting a kick out of it. Haha, <laughs> look guys, I'm a string bean and... Steve? Steve is an Oompa Roompa. Mario laughed and pointed until we saw the clowns approaching us again from behind. <laughs> we've got company, let's keep going. We found our way to the end of the mirror maze and were met with jump scares courtesy of two giant strongmen who screamed at us then continued curling what appeared to be severed torsos while taunting us to come back for more. The next section was one that looked like it was going to be a tight fit. It was a giant clown face with the middle teeth missing. It appeared to be the entrance, but it was low to the ground. We had to duck down to get in. We continued like this for a while and then reached an area that was tight from the sides. This must be the claustrophobia section. Mario said, looking a little bit flustered as he did. I noticed something that I found a bit unsettling as we began to waddle into the hall. A man was crawling through the section that we just went through. We continued through and eventually made it out of the tiny cramped spaces. As we did, the man came out just a little bit behind us. He was staring at the three of us with a strange smile on his face. Not sick and demented, not like he was part of the act, just strange. We walked past some guys who were dressed up like they were part of the freak show, and I leaned in towards Mario and Tim. Guys, have you noticed that weird guy following behind us? Mario nodded in agreement. Yeah, he kind of looks like a creeper or something. Tim was dismissive. You guys are letting this place get to you. He probably just works here and has to make sure that people don't get stuck in that claustrophobic part. I shook my head. Nah, man. I, I don't think so. He doesn't look like the rest of the staff people. They all have shirts with the logo. Tim waved me off. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe he just wanted to come to the haunt because he didn't have anything better to do. I'm sure some people come to these things alone. Two girls dressed up as Harlequin jumped out in front of the path, scaring Mario back into my chest. Crap! Oh man, is this thing ever gonna be over? He said in a whimper as we pushed past the high-pitched smack-talking girls. The man fell out of sight, so I began to convince myself that maybe Tim was right. I mean, they had to have someone walking with people through that part, didn't they? How else would they make sure that everyone got through safely? I still felt a bit uneasy. But we became so engrossed in the haunt that eventually it was the last thing on my mind. We stepped outside to the sound of loud air cannons as a few clowns squirted us with water and taunted us as we walked by. A lion tamer was cracking a whip loudly over to the side and a squeaky old merry-go-round that was turning and playing unsettling music. As we drew near to the exit, there was another large and imposing character. I almost couldn't tell if he was real until at the last second he jumped towards us, sending us fleeing around him. The exit had curtains draped, and we couldn't even see the final clowns who cranked up their chainsaws until they were right beside us. 
This sent us running out into the parking lot while screaming and laughing with each other as we did. We were overjoyed and pumped with adrenaline. It was an incredible Halloween night and would definitely be one to remember. We made our way over to the Lexus and hopped in. Tim cut the engine on and began to take off. The car bumped hard as it moved. Tim sighed and backed it up into the spot. Oh no, dude. That didn't feel good. He hopped out and looked at the tires. Guys, get out here. There's there's something wrong. We undid our seatbelts and began to get out of the doors. As we did, Tim was running around and looking at each tire. He was panicked. He grabbed his head and slammed it down onto the hood as he pulled on his hair. I looked towards the tires to see what he was making such a fuss about. They had been slashed. It must have been a large knife because big flaps were hanging open on each of them where the hole was cut. I began to understand the gravity of the situation, and panic began to rise in my chest as well. What are we going to do, Tim? Your dad is going to lose his shit if he finds out we were in his car and then this happened. He shot up from the car and shoved me in frustration. You don't think I know that? Mario spoke in a wavering voice and he was pointing towards the woods that were near the parking lot. Guys, it's that guy. The one that was following us in the haunt. My heart skipped a beat as I looked to where he was pointing. It was indeed the same man who was crawling close behind us in the claustrophobia section. He was standing there by the woods with that same strange smile. He held a large knife in his hand, but he made no motion. I made a call to action as we were all officially beginning to lose our shit. We gotta get help. I'm gonna call the cops. Let's head towards the front so we can try to find someone up there. I typed 911 in my phone and looked back to where the man had been standing. Guys, he's gone. I shoved Tim to start running towards the front as I held up the phone to my ear. It wasn't until we were halfway to the front that I realized Mario wasn't right behind me. I turned around and saw the man dragging Mario into the woods. 911, what is your emergency? No, 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 Mario! Okay, just calm down. We need to know what is happening so we can send someone to help you. I was crying now and trying to fight through my tears to make a coherent sentence. The the, 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 the haunted circus! My, my friend! He just took my friend! <sighs> that haunted house? Are you calling me from inside of it, freaking out because you're scared of monsters? No! My friend! A man took him into the woods! He slashed the tires on our car! We need police now! I was so pissed that she would imply I would call in such a state because of some actors in clown masks that I just hung up after that statement. I looked towards Tim, who was pushing to the front of the ticket line. He was frantically waving his arms around and pointing towards the woods. I don't know if it was the adrenaline, if I was pissed from my phone call with 911, or it was just plain stupidity. Whatever it was though, I took off running. I was running straight towards the forest. I had no way of defending myself and no idea what I was going to do when I got there. I heard Tim calling from the ticket booth for me to come back and asking what the fuck I was doing. That didn't stop me though. I was barreling full speed ahead. I couldn't let Mario die out there with that sicko. If he wanted to hurt my friend, he was going to have to take on the both of us. I made it into the trees and had the flashlight of my phone on. I started to call out to the man angrily. Where are you, huh? You, you think you could just come and do this to us? I'm gonna find you, you freaking pervert! You better let Mario go! The cops are on their way! And everyone knows that you're over here! I went deeper and deeper into the woods, but I couldn't see or hear Mario anywhere. I was just about to go on another tirade when I felt a crack against the back of my head. Just as I felt it, everything went black and I fell to the ground. I woke up in a daze. There was dirt on my face. I shook it off and realized that my hands were bound in front of me and something was tied around my mouth. I was surrounded by dirt walls, maybe five or six feet tall with a plywood roof. I saw Mario bound up at the other end of the room and was excited for a brief moment. 
I tried to let him know through my facial expressions that I was thrilled to see him. He was hardly able to keep his head up. There was only dim lighting from a gas lantern on the side of the room. As I was considering maneuvering onto my knees to shuffle over and check on Mario, the wood was moved from the top, letting sunlight in. Sunlight? How long had I been down here? As the wood was moved, leaves and sticks fell on Mario's head. He hardly acknowledged it at all. The man who trapped us down here threw a black trash bag in and made his way down before sliding the wood back over the top. He held a bundle of aluminum foil in his hands, and he sat down cross-legged in the middle of the room. For a moment, he just sat there with that same smile that he had at the haunt. It wasn't sinister. It wasn't sexual in nature. It was... It, 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 it was just... Off. His gaze didn't leave mine for what felt like an eternity. My stomach began to growl. The pangs of my hunger were beginning to manifest. I had been out for at least a day. I dare not think that it could have been longer than that. He set the foil down and reached over to pull down whatever he had in my mouth. I thought about asking him something or, or screaming. I even considered spitting in his face. I just sat there, though. I guess it was a mix of not knowing what to say or do and, and just plain being paralyzed with fear. The man spoke. His voice was feeble, and there was an odd cadence to it. Ah, hello, my boy. You must be hungry. You've been here all day, after all. <laughs> Hearing him call me, that set me off and helped me to break my silence. I'm not your fucking boy. What did you do to Mario? Why do you have us down here? He smiled and paused for just a few beats too long as he looked me in the eye. Mm. Eats, my boy. Eats. He opened the foil and presented me with what looked like some homemade barbecue. I was determined not to eat it. My resolve proved too weak as he dropped the meat covered in sticky sauce in front of me, though. I devoured it and was sucking the sauce off my fingers. As I finished, I looked up and saw Mario looking at the empty wrapper longingly. I instantly felt terrible for not thinking of how hungry he must have been and saving himself. My thoughts were interrupted by our captor. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry, my boy. I brought some for your friend here. Although, it is quite a bit more... fresh. <laughs> yes. He reached over for the trash bag that he had tossed in earlier and tore it open. Within the bag was the body of a dismembered young boy. The man grabbed the leg, which was cut off at the knee, and shoved the bloody stump into Mario's face while laughing in a disjointed and breathless manner. <laughs> eat, 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 eat. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Mario was crying and turning his face away from the bloody stump. I began retching and vomiting violently as I realized what I had just eaten. I put my hands on my face as the level of danger that we were in was beginning to dawn on me. Suddenly, we heard what sounded like a group of people approaching above. I looked up and saw the shock on the man's face. He threw the bloody stump onto Mario's lap and hopped to his feet. Goodbye, boys. Until next time. He pushed the wood to the side and took off somewhere above. We could hear shouting in the distance. They were rapidly approaching our location. Within moments, the whole piece of plywood was pulled back and police officers were poking their heads over to see what was inside. 
Their faces range from shocked and disgusted to concerned and empathetic. As I realized that we were saved, the tension left my body. I looked over to Mario, and he looked back at me with an empty stare. Blood was smeared across his mouth and cheeks, and his eyes were wet with tears. At the hospital, they let Mario and me stay in the same room. Neither of us had been badly injured, so they figured there was no harm in letting us stay with each other for emotional support. We had been going over the events for hours and had finally reached a point when we had nothing left to say. Reruns of game shows were playing on the TV in the room, and we both were just kind of zoning out for a second. Hey guys. Tim's voice came as the door creaked open. He approached us with his head down and looking guilty and disheartened. I'm grounded for the foreseeable future, but my dad said it was alright if I came to see you guys first. As he neared the edge of my bed and walked over between the two of us, I could see that his lip was quivering as he fought tears back. I just wanted to have a good time on Halloween. I... I never in a million years would have thought. I'm so sorry. Mario had the remote control that was attached to the bed by a cord in his hand. He swung it around and clocked Tim right in the nuts with it. Tim doubled over in pain, but soon was laughing and punched Mario in the shoulder. Mario laughed and responded. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're even now. I chimed in at this point as well. There was no way that you could have known what was going to happen, bro. Neither one of us blame you, one bit. Tim appeared to loosen up a bit as I said this, and picked his head up a little higher. He recounted what he had heard about the man who almost killed us. They said there were multiple disappearances that they'll be linking to that guy. They weren't able to catch him when he went running. He knew those words like like the back of his hand. I just wonder, how long has he been doing this? Since they couldn't catch him, I don't know if he'll try to do it again. Skulking around in the woods and preying on innocent kids who are trying to have a good time? I'm just so glad that you guys are okay. The door swung open as he said this. It was the staff bringing our lunch to us. As the lady pushed the table up to me and took off the lid, it took everything I had not to puke on the plate. Barbecue. No, thank you. You've been listening to the Night's End Podcast, Halloween Special 2022, a production by Dissonance Media. Halloween Night was written by C.D. Kester. Follow C.D. Kester on Twitter at C.D. underscore Kester. And read The Bunker, available in ebook, audiobook, and paperback. Link is in the description. This episode was performed by Alvin Bowling II, Tetsuya, Limited Stories, James Barnett, and Victoria Irwin. Steve was performed by Alvin Bowling II, who is a mixed race, black and Japanese, American actor, singer rapper, social justice advocate, Virginia native, voice actor, voiceover artist, and the creator and host of the Ghost Light Theatre podcast. Head to alvinthesecond.com for more details on his projects. Tim was performed by Tetsuya who is a narrator, writer, and voice actor. For more from Tetsuya, head to his YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Tetsuya H. Mario was performed by Limited Stories, who is a horror narrator. 
You can catch more of his work on YouTube. Link is in the description. The Carney and the Creepy Man were performed by James Barnett. James is a writer, voice actor and narrator, podcast producer and reluctant transport manager. For more works from James, head to jamesbarnettcreative.com or to connect with him, head to Twitter or Instagram and follow him at Jimmy Horrors. The 911 operator was performed by Victoria Irwin from the podcast Texas Slang for Crazy, a podcast about Texas and its unique and crazy identity. To check it out, head over to txslangforcrazy.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. This episode was produced and edited by James Barnett. The Night's End Halloween theme was composed by Duncan Muggleton. For more from Duncan, head to Twitter and follow him at Duncan Muggleton. Stay horrific, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>